Hello there. This is just another one of my short videos showing some of the influences that went into my comic, We Are Scarlet Twilight, which is a sort of Golden Age throwback comic. Uh, so as you might expect, a lot of those old Golden Age characters, the old Justice Society, Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers, all those guys um, were a big influence on my characters. And uh, one I'm going to go through today is a favorite of mine, and I think a lot of people's, The Shadow. So let's get into this. Uh, I think everyone has a pretty good idea of him. This is sort of his classic look, the overcoat, the red scarf, uh, and especially the two guns. That's something that I notice really does make something look much more like part of the Golden Age pulp era. The Phantom has the two guns, the Shadow has it, uh, and it's definitely something I picked up uh, with Captain Lancet because uh, I wanted him to really fall within the vocabulary of those heroes, which is why he has his two blasters there. Uh, another fun thing about the time period is the prevalence of radio. A lot of these characters had great radio adventures. Superman had some good ones. The Shadow was, I think, one of the all-time greatest uh, that would be on the radio and was famously voiced, uh, as you probably know, by Orson Welles. So to get into this, uh, the Shadow was not necessarily always a comic book character. Uh, he would appear in these magazines that would be prose stories with spot illustrations. They were usually mysteries and had some great painted covers. One thing I like about a lot of the covers, and I think about the shadow in particular, is the artist took a lot of time to define his face shape. He was not a standard looking guy. He wouldn't look right if you gave him more generic proportions. And as you can see, they also are playing with that with these villains here. Uh, the shadow has a very recognizable look. You'd almost know him and sometimes do, even without his get up, his hat, his scarf, his coat. Uh, he's got that long nose, the long face, the, the really sinister eyes. And I think that's something that Aside from the coolness of his overall visual appeal, he's got a great costume. It, just that look, the intensity, it gave him an identity that I think a lot of other heroes lack. He always looks mad. Batman could be drawn mad. Superman could be drawn mad or could be drawn happy. Shadow was always sort of like this guy. So I think that gave him a character that was unique to himself. And I think uh, it was one of the keys into why this character has endured for so long. So this is another great... Uh, look at these uh, these covers. They're beautiful paintings for the most part, uh, very graphic, and also many of them hinted, I think, at the story in a pretty cool way. They didn't just throw the character up there or an action scene. There was intriguing mysteries built just in the first image that you'd see, uh, and they also would play a lot with uh, color. You'd always have these great color fields with this fantastic logo. And they'd, they'd be playing with graphic flatness, things like that, too. It's not quite fourth wall stuff, but it does seem to be heading in that direction. Another cool one here. Again, these are really sophisticated graphic setups they're going with. And I think that's one thing that, that has really always made the shadow stand out. Uh, and again, I think he has a lot of identity. Like I said, I think that's his expression, his costume. Uh, but just the care that went into this, you see covers like this, but you don't always see them uh, as part of an unmistakable thing that this character would tend to have over and over again, like you do with the shadow. So I think that's something that also was a big part of what made him so cool. A better look at that painting from earlier. You can really get in there and see uh, this beautiful work going on here. Very impressionistic, heavy oils, uh, you know, on the canvas, great textures. Uh, really beautiful stuff. And I find it's really valuable as an artist to get in there uh, to when you can find a scan of something that's this high res that really gets in there and lets you see not just sort of what the artist was doing, but exactly what they were doing. You'll generally learn some things that will inform uh, your own work later on. At least that is what I've always found to be the case. It's another painting, uh, not by the artist that usually paints him, but an another look at him and a, a bit of a different take on the costume as well. He's got a white scarf and uh, a little more of a bulky jacket, almost like a cape here. The hat seems to be a little different. But again, a very graphic look. Uh, I love this cityscape and these people. Um, the, the roughness of it does, I think, work really well with the, the, the liveliness of this light that comes out of the building. I love this red moon behind him. Uh, great stuff. Uh, he did have some comic book uh, roots. And in fact, uh, in, while he would appear in strips, there's a lot of these uh, images that did inspire, Scar inspire Scarlet Twilight. Um, you'd see he would kind of interact with superheroes a little bit. I don't think he ever was a comfortable fit 
within the comic book superhero world that was sort of developing in the early 40s. Uh, he was a little bit more of a throwback character. I think he has a lot more in common, say, with Zorro than he does with, you know, someone that looks like this or, say, uh, the Atom or Green Lantern. A few more looks at the comic strip. Uh, Kind of like Buck Rogers that we looked at a, a week or two ago. Very graphic stuff, a lot of Zipatone. Uh, you're not getting a lot of brushy, atmospheric stuff like you do with Alex Raymond, but still very cool stuff. Uh, and fun to see him being, uh, I think, so adventurous here, uh, which usually he's a little more of a Sherlock Holmes character, despite his power, skill set, uh, iconic look. A few more comics here. Sharing with uh, Buck, Ro or Buck Rogers, Doc Savage, another great one. And another great look at, uh, you know, an adventurous, cool cover that hints at a lot of story. Uh, another cool thing about him, and this was a big inspiration for the Maxi Militia, is he had his group of, of assistants uh, in the movie. They were the, the Alec Baldwin movie. They were people whose lives he had saved and had pledged to help him fight crime, although he was pretty intense, it seemed, about asking uh, for their help. But it's cool to see a diverse group of people Lots that you can just imagine that these guys walk through every walk of life and were, were good in outlets, I think, to take the shadow character into a lot of different places. Uh, the driver especially was uh, where Maxie kind of entered the story in terms of his relationship to Captain Lancet. And you get that you know, reflected in this book. And it, it came right from the shadow. You can see him here. He's uh, playing that role. And the, the main sidekick of the shadow in the 93 movie was uh, was this type of character and that's very much what maxi's initial role in the story was based on another great cover uh, i've included this one because you can see it getting a lot more superhero here in addition to being still very pulpy this guy's got a mask you can see they were making an attempt to get you something that was a little bit more of a larger than life villain not just a gangster not just some guy um, so that's Interesting, I think, in that regards, and, you know, addition to just being a very cool illustration. So that brings me to another really cool part of the Shadows, I guess, experience with uh, with people that follow the character is the radio show uh, that I mentioned earlier. There's a really cool old advertisement for it. You see the character still looks very consistent with his pulp appearance, and I just love these graphics you got here. The, uh, the sort of distressed radio font is fantastic. I love how they're bringing it back here. Um, and just great typefaces, great stuff like that to see. Um, I, I would definitely have listened to this show if that was something to do back in the day. Uh, again, and this is pretty close. So you can see this was not necessarily an artist with as much time or potentially skill to create this illustration. But they are managing to stay consistent even when they don't with his costume. They can generally have gotten pretty close with his face, which is an interesting thing to see reproduce consistently i think so pretty cool stuff there i think this is just an ad for another book you could get um, and this is a advertisement a really beautiful one for the movie uh, i've seen this one it was not necessarily one of my favorites uh, it's not exactly what you'd hope it would be the shadow out there with his classic uniform you know using his revolvers fighting people you can use mental powers as i remember it was a little bit more of a sort of drawing room mystery type thing. Uh, lots of him trying to get away and do something while people don't see him. Just not, not really what you wanted to see, unfortunately. But uh, one thing I will say is that these this poster does really give you um, the classic atmosphere you'd want to see. I mean, that poster sells the movie even if the movie is not so great. So another cool thing here was this shadow board game. I was excited to see a nice scan of. This looks like a lot of fun. Um, plays up a lot of the adventures you'd see the Shadow have, which is cool. Uh, we're getting into solving. Factory Sabotage, Foreign Agent is really referring, I think, to the wartime theme, which is good to see. Traps, all the classic stuff. So this is really fun. I would love to get a hand, my hands in a copy of this. The, the front of that board game, again... Kind of a weird reproduction of the character, although it does keep the features intact. But what a nice graphic, uh, you know, just image you've got there. Great use of color. And I think that's something that's cool about uh, just this character is there's so many visual places to take him. Uh, just the name implies the shadow. So you're going to be casting shadows everywhere, which they do to effect here. Uh, the big black 
shape of him with the coat and the hat. Uh, just really seems to have inspired artists to go crazy with colors in other areas, which I think was a really cool thing that you'd end up getting out of that. And, and again, part of what makes him somebody that is still remembered today. A few more things you could get here back in the day. You could join the Shadow Club. You mail away for. Um, you get all these cool things. They stamped like this, which is really fun to see. Blue Coal, uh, which I think you might have seen in the radio program ad. Uh, must have been his main sponsor. But again, this must have just been amazing to get in the mail. Uh, what a great experience that must have been. There's another look at that. You get your pin and this pledge you would take to be in the secret society of the shadow. Fun stuff. And the character obviously still survives today. He makes it back into print every few years with new adventures. I think Dynamite was the last one to tackle it. Uh, but I always check it out when it's there. Uh, a few artists have tackled him that have done really well with it. Michael Cotula is one of the most notable. And here's a nice study of his of his take on the shadow, Lamont Cranston and uh, Margot Lane. Uh, this is Gary Gianni. Um, does a very faithful recreation of the character, as you can see. Uh, and these the uh, pen work that he's doing here, the brush work and stuff like that, is pretty reminiscent. I couldn't find a good image of it, of the sort of illustrations you'd see illustrating the prose adventures of the shadow back in the thirties and forties. So this is a great style. I think very faithful in some very intelligent ways. Uh, Matt Wagner, always one of my favorites uh, has tackled the character as well. This is a great cover he had done. Uh, Howard Chaikin took a run at in the eighties, I think was a really interesting attempt to update the character for the time that it was being published. Uh, it's interesting if not, necessarily what, what I'd want to see from a shadow comic. And you can see he really was throwing out everything he felt didn't work. The facial appearances, this could be Batman or Superman. It could be anybody. Um, this is, uh, des despite what I'm saying about the character approach, which I guess I'm not a big fan of, even though these stories are interesting to see, uh, this is one of my favorite shaken pages of all time. These graphics of these screens are amazing. You've got his graphic work adapted in a retro way up here. Classic shaken faces, the zipatone, and then all these different textures you're getting with, again, some classic uh, sound effects. Very cool stuff. Uh, if not necessarily, this is probably the biggest outlier in terms of uh, how the shadows approach. And it's another interesting thing is you can see what he was doing. Uh, you know, you just didn't have computer typefaces back in the day. He worked with what he had and just decided to selectively white out some areas to give us this shadowy effect. I think was a really intelligent uh, and interesting choice to make. So I'll leave you with another classic shadow image here. Uh, if you've enjoyed this look at the shadow and, and these types of characters and stories, I hope you'll give my comic We Are Scarlet Twilight a look. It's over at zoop.gg right now. It's got the entire stories available. You can get single issues. You can get the entire collected edition in a hardcover with a lot of extras and things about the story, extra pieces of artwork. So if you are a fan of the shadow of this old school stuff, this type of atmosphere or comic book adventures in general, I hope you'll head over to Zoop in the link below and see if you'd uh, be interested in picking something up. I'm going to leave you with a trailer for Scarlet Twilight Part 4. And uh, thanks for checking it out.